Boys, it's been a weird and wacky 2020 AFL season. Coronavirus in the air. Your criminal charges being put on hold. <laughs> Drewsy's infection. How are you, Drewsy? Infected. On top of all that, there has been a few football events that haven't really quite made the mainstream news. Did you boys see that Josh Hill, former West Coast Eagle, has turned out to be more of an absolute bull than an eagle? Why is that, Jesse? Well, I don't know if everyone saw this, but a couple of weeks ago, it came out that he is fathering two children on opposite sides of the country to two different women at the same time. Had it's more roots than me and Bush combined, so good on it. <laughs> He's done well there. Two from two. 100% success rate. And uh, I hope he can juggle both because me and Bush are struggling to juggle any. So uh, uh, good on you. Good I on hope you, he can handle the child support. <laughs> <laughs> hope he's doing okay. <laughs> well, it's a bit difficult if you're an ex AFL player. You probably don't have that many resources of making money beyond your football and supporting two different women who are going to be after him for child support, I assume. Thanks for really bringing this. <laughs> <laughs> so he's engaged to one of them. I think the one in Melbourne. And meanwhile, I think the one that is having a kid, I think it was within the same week, is an ex girlfriend of his. And he says, it was a mistake having sex with this girl and I'm spending every day making it up to my partner. It was a casual arrangement, which I stupidly didn't stop straight away. He should have had a wank and thought about it before he moved on, I think. You can't make any big decision if you haven't had a wank. But I guess if you're uh, an ex-AFL player, you don't need to wank. You've just got these girls on speed dial, apparently. Probably not the wisest decision, though. No. Be yeah. careful what you wish for. In other penis-related news, Stewie Jew has been done, been caught on footage publicly urinating outside a pub. Is this a storm in a key- teacup bush, or do you think he's I was going to actually... say more of a mountain out of a molehill. Oh, okay. Yeah, my expression wasn't good enough. His club's a bit of a piss take, so we thought he'd join in. Ah, Yeah, personally for me, I think absolute storm in a teacup. I mean, if going outside a pub and urinating on a kid is a crime, then fucking throw me in jail and lock away. <laughs> <laughs> but the interesting thing I thought was that it was filmed by a club official who has clearly leaked this. But I mean, I've seen you do worse in your own backyard. I've done worse in other people's backyards. Too. <laughs> but lads, we're here to talk about the finals, which have uh, just been finalised. They've just come up with a week on fixtures, actually. Let's start from the bottom. And now we're here. Start up with Collingwood, right? So they finish eighth with a nine, seven, and one record. Drews, where did you think Collingwood were going to finish at the start of this year? I uh, thought they were going to finish fifth. I predicted, so maybe underperformed. But they did have some tough times with injuries and had to come over to Perth and True. had some. Uh, you poor dogs. They had <laughs> they had that like six games in four days. Not six games in four days. They had like that ridiculous <laughs> amount. Six of, games in four. Yeah, days. Yeah, they had that ridiculous. <laughs> Find amount. two games yeah. a day. They had three games in nine days across three yeah. different states. Definitely, they started the year as a contender, as you said. Mm. Uh, prelim last year probably should have made the grand final bad injury run like you said fixture congestion probably had one of the roughest fixtures that I saw and also had pretty much all of the uh, bad injury luck that you ca- could have like, can they do much damage from eight? Well, they're versing Eagles in the first round so like Eagles probably still getting some guys back on the park they've probably got a bit of rust like those guys have been off the park a bit you could see if everything aligned for Collingwood them doing in that Eagles team, but I think they're better than eight. Like they played Port last night, and that was a good, good contest. They were competitive all throughout, but they're gonna have West Coast in the first round. So, yeah, it's difficult. That's one. yeah, that's tough. The injury run is looking a little bit better. Jeremy Howe may be back. No side bottom confirmed. How far can they go this year, boys? I reckon they're out in the first round, unfortunately. Yeah, pro- Eagles probably bounce them realistically, and if the Eagles don't, whoever they play next probably will. I think they're a good a chance as any in that bottom half of the eight to, to go deep, but I would still probably back them to lose first week as well. Yeah. Next up, we've got the Bulldogs, 10-7 and seven record. Considering the way they ended last year, Bush, and the momentum they had, uh, even though they went out week one last year, do you think this year has been an underachievement for them? Not necessarily, because look at the way they started last year. They've been an inconsistent team the past two years. They're pretty young, so they're still sort of figuring out. So they started the year poorly, like you said. They had an undercooked Norton, your boy, um, who, uh, and I thought they really lacked uh, avenues to goal, but they had a really strong elite engine room, as we know, with their midfield like Bont and McRae and guys like that. Looks like, for the most part, their injury list is pretty good. Toby McLean's obviously out for 12 months with an ACL, but going into the finals, they should have most of their best 22 available. First opponent, St. Kilda, how far do they get? I could say going into the second week because I'd probably almost have them as the favourite against St Kilda myself. But they're more talented than St Kilda I feel, especially because as you highlighted they're healthy. Norton's out isn't he? With a fractured cheek, right? I saw him playing last game. Is well, he, he played us. And they- oh, wait, no, he got injured, didn't he? Against yeah, against Freo. Yeah. He yeah. broke his, his cheekbone. Oh. Yes, yes, I knew that. I was looking at the injury list from last week. I didn't actually catch the ball. Yeah, um, so, so Norton's out. Is he out? I think. Oh, that is actually a bit of a change. I see St. Kilda winning. 
to be honest. St Kilda have had big results this year, um, as have the Western Bulldogs. But um, no, I think St Kilda have more quality, to be honest. If, if I'm with, with my expert hat on, that's what I'm going. I'm going with the Saints in the first round. Well, the next team I was going to mention is St Kilda. Again, a 10-7 and, and seven record. They've come a long way from sacking Richo last year. Didn't look anywhere near it as a finals contender. And now Ratten has been vindicated as the new coach of choice. Has this been a big surprise to you this season? Yeah, I thought I didn't think he was that great. Where was he at before Carlton? Yeah. Did nothing. Yeah, no, nah, good on him. Redemption got pretty deep into the top eight. Well, not deep, but six is pretty comfortable, isn't it? So Especially considering they were like 14 for whatever last year. Yeah, definitely got room to build. A lot of potential in that St. Kilda team. Potential. Um, so for the first season in finals in a while, six is pretty healthy. Um, and I reckon they'll get through to the second round and then probably get knocked out. It is their first finals run since 2011. Last year, they had a really bad injury run, one of the worst injury-affected sides. And this year, they were uh, one of the better injury run sides. So we've seen what they've, they've done with also the Also had a few big ends this year in terms of recruits they got four or five guys in definitely this year that all good finals experience as well brad hill playing yeah. in three flags my only doubt on them is their ability to perform on a big occasion coming up against in week one they got the dogs who are more experienced and then it's probably only going to get harder after that mm. i thought they were really poor against west coast it is only one game but that was a chance to seal finals and the eagles had like a d-list waffle <laughs> side playing in that game and they lost it are they making up the numbers bush you kind of already answered Drizzy, but do you mm. think they can do some damage in this final series i'm leaning a bit towards the bulldogs in that first round match but that's not too convincingly. Like St Kilda have showed a lot this year and those recruits have really helped them ascend to another level. They definitely deserve to be where they yeah. are. I don't um, disagree with that. I just think against more experienced finals opposition, mm. I can see them going out in week one. Yeah, for sure. Next up is my boys, the West Coast Eagles, 12 and five. They overcame a horrid first Queensland hub when they were over there. I think that was around the time we did the podcast with you, Drews, actually. We had just been done by Port Adelaide by like, all the goals in the world, but they've come home strong. They were, I think, seven and zero in Perth, and then five and five in Queensland. So considering that, to go twelve and five is actually very respectable. Unluckily for them, the top part of the ladder is really heavy. Like the top mm. two teams went fourteen and three. I think they're a team that could have done a lot of damage had they made the top four. But I think being fifth this year makes them a lot less relevant. And I made the same I, argument this. I was going to bring up an argument you made the other week, though. At one point, you were almost preferring fifth, I believe. The reason I made that argument is because. Because we only could play a home final if we made an elimination yeah. final. So if we'd finished fourth, then we wouldn't have had any time in Perth. Or we've had like a little bit of time in Perth and then played away finals for the whole final series. So there is an argument for that. But that being said, considering all the away finals we're going to play most likely are in Brisbane. Um, it's hard to see the Eagles doing real damage. Like one of the best sides in the comp, best midfield in the comp. How are their injuries looking coming into finals? Like they, they were pretty romped, but do they have any key ends coming back? Garvin's coming back. Cripps is back from personal leave. Shuey will be back for the first final. And Redden and Hutchings come in to sort of bolster that midfield. The only one is Yo. They thought was going to come back for the final round, but he looks like several weeks away. He's definitely not going to play. How far can they get? They've got Collingwood in week one. I think we sort of all said maybe the Eagles are favourites in that game, but uh, past that, how far can they get? Bush? Who will they get? I think Second versus third, sorry. Uh, they will get the loser of Port and Geelong away. Port and Geelong. I rate the chances, eh? Hey, out of the bottom four bottom top eight teams we've discussed, the Eagles are the one most likely to get past the second round for me. What will be crucial is if in week two they get Port Adelaide at Adelaide Oval. That's where we've never lost to them. Yeah, you've, you, you have a bit of luck there against Port Adelaide. Yeah, I think if we play Geelong in week two in Queensland, that'll be tough. I think we have a sneaky chance of making a prelim, but then after that it will probably be playing Richmond at the Gabba and it's very hard to see us mm. making it too far past that. Prelims definitely achievable. Though. Definitely. I think if you didn't make a prelim as a West Coast fan, you'd be pretty upset with that. Next up, we've got a team that I was a little surprised to see finish in fourth position because I thought a few weeks ago this was the best team in the comp. They get written off every single year, but they went 12-5 and five and have as much star power or finals experience as, as any other team. But they just keep like falling at the last hurdle. They haven't mm. made a grand final um, since 2011, but made, I don't even know how many few prelims. prelims. Like yeah, at least three or four. Two or three, yeah. And a good chance to at least make another one. They limped into the finals with an average last two rounds they got done by Richmond and then nearly got done by Sydney I was really hoping they would lose that to slip out of that top four mental block versus Richmond do they have one considering they had almost like a little grand final preview last week and got absolutely rolled by the Tigers we're what talking about Geelong by the way um, yeah. Did I not mention Geelong? <laughs> no, I don't think you did. Oh, I didn't mention Geelong at all. Okay, talking, cool. You were talking about like how they haven't made a grand final with the. They've got like their best players in their prime. It's pretty strange. Like Frio have been in the grand final 
like since Geelong have, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, true. That's weird, hey. <laughs> I think Geelong are the favourites to win it, but they always just like seem to choke in the in the prelim. Will that game against Richmond be a hurdle? I don't think so. I just think they didn't show up that night. And they beat Port very convincingly when they played last. So that should be a, a decent matchup for them that they'll like their chances in. Mainly midfield, but they go enough talent around the rest of the ground. They've got the common medalist, Tom Hawkins, who's like wine, better with age. Yeah, suppose. Gary <laughs> Rowan's firing on all cylinders as well. Hey, he's really good. Yeah, he's a handy, medium, a bit of a bull. Forward. Yeah, he's a thick boy. Thick and quick. <laughs> <laughs> and what about a football? <laughs> Lads. There was a lot of talk about uh, how Rowan missed that game against Richmond and therefore it made Richmond really clamp down on Hawkins because Geelong really only had one avenue to go. And he had, like you said, a potential MVP performance this season. I've heard some discussion actually about them wanting to play Dangerfield forward more. like Because yeah. in the last game they played him a lot more forward and they freed mm. up Hawkins a lot more. Like, And the thing is they've got Selwood and those sort of dudes back in the team now so they can kind of afford to let Danger play a bit more time in the forward and let the other guys do their thing in the midfield. So even when they had like Radical Ears, like another big tall, the guy on him sort of like on the side of Hawkins ready to like run over and help. Like whereas if it's Dangerfield, you're just like, oh shit, I've got to stop mm, Dangerfield. Gotta commit. They are looking pretty healthy when I looked at the injury list, which has betrayed me already once in this video. Uh, Gary Rowan, Joel Selwood, Jack Stephen, uh, Atkins and Stanley all should be available for finals. And they were currently on the injury list as well. All the way. They're going to the grand final this year, I reckon. Yeah. I'm going to say prelim for sure. Whether or not it's the hard way or the easy way, they definitely make a prelim. In third spot, we've got last year's reigning premiers, Richmond with a 12-4-1 record. Again, they started the season slowly, which is almost like a good omen for them because every time they've won the flag, they've started poorly and come home really strong. Again, hub situation with key outs and they've proven too good. Had a bit of adversity with the injury front, like Hooley and Shane Edwards, who were pretty good key players, didn't play for them for a, a serious amount of time. They've got really strong records against the Lions, like we touched on, and Geelong. Uh, which puts them in good stead. If they win the flag from here, Druzy. The flag? Yeah, if they win the flag from here, how do they stack up against teams like Hawthorne and Geelong, uh, having won three out of four flags and then a prelim in between? Yeah, they're going to be a real dynasty when you look back on it. Hey, like they had that blip against in the prelim against Collingwood, but other than that, it would be, if they win the flag, it's three or four. Is mm. that right? Yeah, yeah and a minor no. premiership in between. And they're playing really well in the hubs as well. They haven't, like, West Coast, when they, or their first hub, or even in the second hub, West Coast weren't like as good as they were at home, but Richmond have really seemed to like show their quality and come out on top of it. Um, I really like Richmond's chances. Hey, them and Geelong are my favourites for it. But like the gap is so small that like if Darcy can just get a clearance, it's gonna sit in the lap of like Jack Revo, mm. Tom Lynch. And like when you don't have Harris Andrews in, that's that's a big yikes. They're probably proving to be one of the most mentally strong teams as mm, well. Like they've got sure. that champion mindset where you, you they're the sort of thing you would never discount if they're like five goals down. It, the con conditions of Queensland do suit them, but they or they are obviously a really really good team. We've proven so. Bush, you were a little skeptical on the uh, the Tigers a few weeks ago. Yeah. Where do you sit now on them? It's I've improved on them, but like, I've, they've still been whinging and stuff a fair bit, but they've sort of cut down on that a bit. They've sort of realised, yeah, it's final time, we've got to pull our fingers out, stop the whinging. I think they're the number one seed. Where do you think they sit? Probably two or three for me. What about you, Drews? <laughs> Is Richmond the number one seed? Oh well, Yeah, I reckon they're neck and neck. Oh, it's hard. It's really like tight. The top five is really, really tight. Hey, it's gonna be a good final series. I'm heaps keen on it because it's not gonna be like a blowout like last season. It's a like, weird se series where like all the finalists or the top contenders have like weird like the wood on each other kind of. So Richmond just beat Geelong and um, and Brisbane, so they kind of got the wood on those two teams in terms of like they always beat them. Brisbane sort of have it over Port Adelaide. Geelong annihilated Port, but Port has also beaten Richmond, so yeah. it's almost like if Port pl play and Richmond, they're going to final. And West Coast have the Port Adelaide. Yeah, I don't. I wasn't even really considering West Coast in that level to be. He honest. said five. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. But I mean, you said it the other day. It's like how different teams match up on each other more than anything. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Yeah, that's right. Stylistically, like the way they coach. Next up, we've got the Brisbane Lions, and they have backed up a breakout year with an equally good if not better season than last year going 14 wins and three losses I really don't see an asterisk on your notes there <laughs> <laughs> if you go 14 and 3 that's equivalent to like maybe 18 and 4 for the yeah. season and that generally will get you the minor premiership lots of young talent performing well with good experience as well um, and they, it does help that they've played in their home state all year and uh, I suppose there hasn't been as much travel by anyone but being in their sort of home environment definitely would have played a little bit of a factor we already know that they're a good team anyway so I don't think that's really influenced it too much their hoodoo versus Richmond 
another hoodoo question. <laughs> They've lost, was it 15 games straight against the Lions? Mm. Uh, sorry, against the Tigers and like heaps of them at the Gabba. Last year's qualifying final, they got absolutely torched by Richmond in mm. week one and they're coming up against them again. Paris Andrews is the one that will be out and with guys like Tom Lynch and Jack, Re and Jack Rewell in the oppo opposing forward line, uh, That's a big out. That is a mm. blow. To what extent do you think this would be seen as a failure if Brisbane have, um, you know, a home grand final this year, should they make it? How much of a blow would it be to them and how much of a golden opportunity is it um, if they don't win the flag? Bit of a slight shit the bed maybe for them. Like. <laughs> <laughs> slight shitting of the bed. Difference is they can shit their own beds. Like teams like Port Adelaide and Brisbane that get to play home finals, like they have a huge advantage. Like imagine being able to go home to your own place every night, like not going home to a hotel room, seeing your family and whatnot. That's a huge advantage. They're going to be Definitely. way more mentally prepared than most teams. So if they cook it, mm. it's pretty... Pretty black, I reckon. Yeah, it's going to be their best opportunity to win a flag, like in their home state, in front of a home crowd. Like mm. the planets have aligned for them to an extent. Yeah, yeah. I know that if uh, if it was a Perth Grand Final and the Eagles went down to the prelim, I'd probably be kicking myself. Yeah. One thing I did think it was stiff, though, like the point you just made about home teams having that advantage was that it was only the Eagles that was the centre of the criticism made by Caroline Wilson, who basically uh, was saying that a lot of clubs and Ross Lyon jumped in on as well, saying the Eagles had a huge uncomfortable advantage because uh, they would have a home final, but Brisbane and Port Adelaide yeah. have that same yeah. benefit. All right, one team to go. We got Anthony's The Pair. Sat 14 and 3 this season. Got to give them an A plus in their 150th year. They're the only team since Essendon, I believe, in 2000 to have led the league like every at, at the, the end of every single round. Yeah. And there's a weird omen where like every team, every in every is it every leap year? Every, every leap, year, leap year, yeah. Every leap year, the team who's winning. After round one, who's on top yep. wins the flag. It's happened like the last. That's crazy. Since 2000. Oh, okay, yep. there you go. So, like five then. Um, so, Port Adelaide uh, finishing top is quite spooky, really. Can't really take much away from Port. Only three losses this year. It's, you can't like blame an inconsistent fixture as well this year because, like anyone else, yeah. they've hubbed and everyone's played each other once and they've passed most tests. So they beat Richmond, uh, got pumped by Geelong, but you can probably put that down to an off day potentially. Great blend of youth and experience where they got like guys like Connor Rosie, Butters, Pal Pepper, all these guys, young guys playing with really Darcy Byrne Jones, Dersma, and good experience. But do they lack truly elite players? Like, who do you think is their best player? Is it Travi Boak? Probably Travi Boak's mm -hmm. the best player, but the past couple of years he's probably been an A grader. He's been an A grader, you're right. But he's not like there's there's worse teams with bigger stars, and that doesn't really matter. Like it's not a county against port, but it's just an yeah. interesting observation for a top team to have like maybe one. Like True Robbie stuff, Gray, though. you'd think he'd be that talented guy. He just doesn't have the production. Though. Yeah, that's right. Port Adelaide are slept on, though. It's just the classic, like, outside of Vic, like, underrated players. If Bo played in Victoria, yeah. you know, he'd be seen as, like, that Trent Cotchin sort of level. You're probably right, yeah. Um, but because yeah. he's outside. I mean, I, I'd see him better than Trent Cotchin, to be honest. And I'm yeah. sure the pair yeah. would as well. But, yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah, um, yeah no, nah, I like Port Adelaide. Comfortably beat Collingwood. Had a bit of a slug with them and come out comfortably on top. Mm. Um, I'm keen to see what Port Adelaide are made of. Partially why they're underrated. Ken Hinckley was talking about this. He said the teams below them, Richmond and Geelong, and to a lesser extent, West Coast, have done it for so long and they've proven themselves over a number of years. So people respect them as being, you know, here to stay and come finals, they'll be like ready yeah. to go and Port and Brisbane who went out in straight sets last year haven't quite earned that respect yet so that is a factor and also I think the fact that they've had that 10 goal loss against Geelong does kind of loom over them a little bit because like you said it's it's a match up game but the fact that they are top two and have a good chance of getting a home prelim as well so two home finals makes them very 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 tough to tip against Bush how far are Port going this year definitely will make a prelim they could be like the GWS sort of team like deer in the headlights once they make the grand final but I think they could get to the grand final yeah I agree prelim don't know if I'll make it past that but yeah, I, yeah they're a good crack if you finish top two you're pretty much guaranteed to make a prelim Unless yeah. you're Brisbane last year. But. Yeah. <laughs> Their path to the grand final would be, say, they beat Geelong in week one. They'd go and get a home prelim against most likely uh, Richmond. Brisbane or Richmond. Richmond yeah. I think it would probably, probably be Brisbane, Brisbane actually. Yeah. yeah. So I agree. I probably can see them getting to that prelim because with two home finals on their way there, they'll, they'll certainly get there. But in a big prelim, if they come against Richmond, I'd be very, very nervous about tipping them. If they get a home prelim against Brisbane, I probably would tip them. So I think grand final or prelim is a fairly safe bet from this year yeah. at this point. All right, boys, that is the end of this preview just about. Before we go, let's fire off our predicted grand final. I'll go first. I'm saying Geelong versus Richmond. Richmond Port. Yeah, I'd say Geelong Richmond, hey? Yeah. Yeah, experience. Best teams in the comp, I think. So... 
That'd be a, a rooster of a grand final. But that's the one I'd want to see the most, I've got to admit, it'd be those two teams, because it'd be a neutral ground for both of them. That'd be the best product for a grand final, I feel, of Richmond Geelong. Neutral Do grand finals are the best, I think. Yeah. Two of the most iconic players of our generation as well, like Darcy and Danger. Yeah. Yeah, at the ahead. Gabba as well, like, it'd be a real iconic grand final. I know it's at yeah. the Gabba, but, yeah. like, Darcy, Danger in a grand final that's not at the MCG, like, it could mm. be one to remember. I'm hoping for that. Danger is really looking for that flag to almost, like, legitimize his career. Yeah. That's yeah. one thing Dusty has over him. They've yeah. A brown low each, but Danger's been searching. He hasn't even made a grand final, so True. there is that interesting narrative about that grand final. Yeah, I want to well. see that. But I'm going to go for the pair. Like I hope, I hope for Anthony's sake. Yeah, the power I'm win. whipping the pair home as well. I just supported Port. I like the pair as a bonus. I just, yeah, you, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Sub to Druzy, sub to Truth Footy, and we'll see you. And sub to Outback Hoops Experience. You oh yeah, fuckers. Outback Hoops Experience. Yeah, get around a Bush's NBA podcast as well. We'll see you live throughout the finals. Catch you later. Have a good one.